Hello, friends. Let's find out what happens in Chapter 8 of Mr. Penguin and the Lost Treasure. Chapter 8, A Secret Passage. A few moments later, the rotating stopped and the sound of enormous metal bolts sliding into place ricocheted around the room. Then there was silence. Miss Bones, Monty, Mr. Penguin, and Colin all stood looking at the black void into which this staircase disappeared. What do we do now? whispered Miss Bones, quivering. Mr. Penguin swallowed and adjusted his bow tie. He didn't really know. The hero in his favorite adventure books would have leapt eagerly and often headfirst into the darkness without a second thought. Mr. Penguin was having second thoughts, though, and third ones. But you're an adventurer, Mr. Penguin, he said to himself. Be brave. I suppose we go down there, he said aloud and only slightly nervously. Fabulous, said Miss Bones. Off you go, then. We'll wait for you here. Mr. Penguin paused with one leg in the air. Aren't you coming with us? Miss Bones stared at him, horrified. Me? she gasped. Go down there? But there could be all manner of who knows what waiting to pounce. I er, should um stay up here and look after the museum. No one's going to come to the museum. It's closed, remember, said Mr. Penguin. Anyway, we need you to come with us to help find the treasure. Four brains are better than two. Miss Bones chewed her lip. She glanced up at her giant brother, who was looking a bit pale and green around the edges. Then she sighed. Very well, she huffed, but you'll have to help me down those steps in this pencil skirt. And so all four of them set off. After the first few steps, they were plunged into complete and utter darkness. Great curtains of ancient cobwebs wafted into their faces, and the walls seemed to hiss and jingle in the blackness. There was some brief rustling as Montague patted himself down to find his box of matches. He scraped one against his stubby chin, and a tiny orange flame flared. The adventurers recoiled in horror. The walls and the floor were all teeming with strange bugs and creepy crawlies that jumped from their hiding places and into the gang. Montague squealed, and the match blew out with a puff. Fancy living down here in this moldy old tunnel, thought Colin, when they could be living just a few blocks away in a nice quiet cabin, fi filing cabinet like I do. They hurried as quickly as they could, each step taking them deeper and deeper under the museum. Every few moments, Miss Bones screamed when she felt something wiggle up her stockings. The tunnel started to become warmer and the walls slimy and slippery. Some of the steps were now quite uneven and it was difficult to keep walking without falling over, especially if you were trying to negotiate them on two stubby penguiny legs. All this, together with Miss Bones's yelps and screams, had Mr. Penguin's heart banging in his chest as loudly as the marching band's drums in Cityville's annual Christmas parade. Mr. Penguin had thought they would have found the treasure by now, and that he would be sitting in the park with Colin telling Edith Hedge all about it, and venturing was a lot more dangerous than he'd imagined. If only, he thought, I could stop and have a bite of my nice sandwich. That really would make me feel much, much braver. Just as he was imagining, licking his beak happily behind him, Miss Bones' feet went out from under her and she thumped down several steps. She grabbed wildly to steady herself, and her handbag accidentally whacked against the wall. It must have hit a hidden lever because, with a heavy clunk, the steps underneath them merged together to create a slime-covered chute. They all crashed into each other like pins in a bowling alley and shot down the slide at breakneck speed. Arrgh! They all yelled, terrified. When they turned a corner sharply, they were hurled like cannonballs out into the air. Bump, crash, wallop. They hit the ground and skidded along on their bottoms over roasting hot, sandy earth. That is the end of chapter 8.